One of the uh, links between biology and space science is looking at Earth observation science. Now, satellites are in a unique position in orbit around the Earth. Uh, in that they can really sense data from a global perspective rather than just sampling small areas. So from some of the information that comes back from uh, remote observation and from these satellites, uh, we can sense such things as thermal infrared radiation coming back from the Earth's oceans and from the land masses. And when we start analysing that data over many, many years, we can start to construct models about how things are changing. Now, what that implies, uh, there is fairly robust evidence here, is that the Earth's oceans and uh, other aquatic environments are warming up gradually um, over, over many years. And that has implications for simple creatures such as Daphnia, an example of zooplankton. The experiment that we're doing today um, is looking at one example of, of, of a zooplankton-like organism, uh, Daphnia, um, but it's looking at the effect of temperature change on that organism's metabolic rate. When we subject this Daphnia to different conditions, uh, water of different temperatures, we can actually see the heart rate changing, so speeding up or slowing down depending on the temperature of the water. That is the Daphnia's heart. And because we can see it down the microscope, we can observe its rate of activity. So if we subject the Daphnia to different environmental conditions, and because it's ectothermic, which essentially means cold-blooded, if we warm the, the surrounding temperatures up, we should start to see some increase in activity of the heart. Likewise, if we cool it down, then we should start to see some, some slowdown of the heart rate. So to observe Daphnia under the microscope, uh, what you need to do, first of all, is to isolate the Daphnia uh, just on the, the end of a spoon, uh, is usually the, the simplest way, and suck up one of those Daphnia into a, a small pipette. What you then need to do is to place the Daphnia down onto some small cotton wool islands that have been pre-located on a, on a petri dish. Now the cotton wool is there simply to trap the Daphnia, stop them moving around. So the trick is, when you place the Daphnia down on the cotton wool, is to make sure that they're hydrated, but they are not so hydrated that they are free to, to move around on the petri dish. Uh, once they're, they're in, in isolation, we can then put them under the microscope and start observing. And what we're looking for is their heart. Once we've identified their heart, we can record their heart rate. And then furthermore, we can subject them to different water conditions, at different temperatures, and see what effect that has on their heart rate. In conclusion then, the reasons why the results from this experiment are important to us is because it shows that with increased temperature, the heart rate of Daphnia does indeed accelerate, and with cooler temperatures, it reduces. Now that points to the fact that its metabolic reactions have increased and hence it has a greater oxygen demand. The other factor to bear in mind here is that as you increase temperature, the amount of oxygen dissolved in water actually starts to decrease. Now when you put those two conflicting factors together, what it means is that at high temperatures, Daphnia have a greater oxygen demand but a reduced oxygen availability. And that puts the Daphnia under stress, such stress to the point where they could actually die. Now, the reason that that's important to us is because it underpins various different food chains and food webs. Uh, Daphnia are an example of primary consumers. Um, they occupy the, uh, the second trophic level in the food chain. And for that reason, if they get removed, then they're going to have big implications or they're going to have a big impact on other organisms around them. You could, in some cases, see a complete catastrophic destruction of an entire food web.